Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tech S. It is Brandy's coming back to you guys today with episode two of Quest for Perfection. And last week, you guys were loving the series. I was getting a lot of positive responses from you guys. Uh, thank you a lot. I'm loving it too. I'm doing all this research. I'm finding out which is better for what, and it's really fun. So I'm doing frame latency testing with this stuff. And this week, we're coming back with the PCI Express uh, NIC from Intel, the CT9301. And we're gonna be pitting that against MSI motherboards uh, killer NIC. So this is the onboard LAN controller from MSI. Now it's a new generation from MSI. They're putting out these killer NICs. So I want to find out how good they actually are. And I also want to find out how good the Intel is. So I put these together. And I've also, also one more thing is I'm going to test it with and without the software. Because I want to find out if it makes a difference. Also a few people wanted to find out if it makes a difference too. Now I'm going to be testing this across three different games. Uh, the first two games, which are Black Ops 2 and Heroes of New Earth, these two will be done at 120 hertz. And the third game will be Never Winter, which will be done at 60 hertz, because for some odd reason it doesn't support 120 hertz. Well, it does, but it's buggy. So these three games, all low GPU settings and shadows off. This puts a uh, least amount of strain on the CPU and GPU, because I want to find out if there is a difference between the NFCs. I want to find out where it is, and this will definitely help show it. So the let's get on with the results anyway. So I'll show you guys the results now, and hope you enjoy. So the first part is the speed test, and last week when I did the speed test, I was like, I was really impressed. With the router versus no router, I got a zero millisecond ping. I was just like, yeah, it doesn't get much better than this baby. 89.04 megabits per second, uh, 70 megabits upload. But then I did the speed test with the Intel NIC, and my fucking God, 171 megabits per second. This was just insane. When I saw this pop up on my screen, I was like, oh my God, God damn. This thing delivers. So this Intel uh, NIC delivers on its promise of its speeds. It is a fast NIC, so kudos there to uh, Intel. Now, another thing to note is if you guys are thinking, no, but that's just a speed test. You won't get that in real-world conditions. Uh, have a look at this. Uh, downloading Counter-Strike Global Offensive the next day. Look at those megabytes per second. That's megabytes, not megabits. 22.4 megabytes per second. So if you were to put that into um, megabits per second, it'd probably be like 180. So these speeds are legit, and the Intel does deliver. So that's a win for Intel there. But let's move on to the Excel results. Okay, so let's look at the results that we got in Excel. Now, this is, if you guys are horrified at these graphs, don't be. This is frame latency testing, where I'm pretty much uh, using a program called Fraps, and I'm doing, in this time, in this time around, I'm doing 80-second runs. And basically, what I'm doing is recording every single frame, and then I'm getting an average for those frames, and then I'm pitting that average against every individual frame. And any frames that uh, deviate from the mean will stand out in the graphs. And basically what that means is that it could be, if, it's, if the difference is too much and it stands out, say, above 20 milliseconds, it's uh, considered a slight micro stutter. Anything above 50 milliseconds is generally considered a noticeable micro stutter. But anyway, let's get on to the results here. We had the killer. This is Black Ops 2 at 120 hertz. And the killer with no software on performed really well. I mean, there was no noticeable um, micro stuttering here. So... Kudos to the killer with no software, it did really well. The worst frame was uh, 12 milliseconds, I believe, which is an impressive result. Moving on to the killer with software, I must admit that I did notice these two little uh, deviations here. They were noticeable when I was playing Black Ops 2, ever so slightly. So, But nonetheless, it was a pretty decent result all around with the software on. I thought the no software off produced a better result than having the software on, uh, if it's anything to go by. And the worst frame was 13 milliseconds, and that happened two times, so interesting to note there. So these these two graphs almost look identical, but they're not. So anyway, let's move on to the Intel now. So the Intel performed really well, in my opinion. It produced a solid result. I did not notice any of this uh, micro stuttering here, and even though... Even though it did produce a 13 millisecond frame, the other frames were relatively scarce. There wasn't many of them deviating from the mean, so I actually did not notice that uh, when I was doing the test. The other results here, yeah, as you can see here, there are these the frames that uh, deviate from the mean in with the no software on and the Intel. They're scarce, so basically we're going to give this win to both no software and the Intel. I'm going to say probably the software on. Uh, probably lost this just ever so slightly. And again, please keep in mind that this is online games. There is just variance. It's I can't, you know, ascertain my results 
and say conclusive evidence when it's online games because there's just variance involved. So, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. But what I will look for is inconsistencies. So let's move on now to Heroes in US, 120 hertz. This time the killer with no software uh, did pretty impressive. I thought that this there was some times where it did have these little micro stutters. This time here I did notice this one in test number three. I did remember noticing that one. The other tests, though, I didn't really notice the, the other um, uh, spikes that went up to 18. And I mean, again, this is just an absolutely amazing result. Uh, none of the frames here are going... The whole time I'm playing this, even on the frame latency spectrum, with no software on, it didn't go below 60 frames per second, like with the worst frame latencies. Uh, the killer with software on, the worst frame here, this did go up to 42 milliseconds. So... This, I did notice this one as well. I did, when I was playing the game, I did notice this. It was a slight micro stutter and I noticed it and I was like, hmm, okay, I'm going to look at the test results and yeah, this did pop up. So that was probably a loss for the software versus the no software in Heroes and New Earth as well. So the rest of the experience though was pretty smooth and the Intel NIC, it performed solid. It was just a solid performer. As you see here, there was no uh, real, uh, you know, big stutters sticking out. So it was it did really well as well so i'd say the victory here again goes to killer with no software and the intel nic uh, let's move on to the last test this is never winter and now i could only do this test at 60 frames per second when i tried to put on 120 hertz even though it's supposedly supported the feature it just didn't work it went back to 60 uh, frames per second so it's something that never went to have to fix or nvidia with their drivers either one but nonetheless i thought it'd be good for you know the 60 hertz gamers out there to have a look at how this game performs with the killer and the NIC and the Intel NIC. So the no software from killer did produce this time around, did produce the worst frame at 42 milliseconds. So that was the worst out of the whole group, I think. I think also the software on produced a 42 as well. So uh, it was a tie there. But now, interestingly enough, the software on, this is where things get really interesting with Neverwinter. As you guys know, uh, the killer NIC software is supposed to prioritize the gaming packets. And now, interestingly enough, with Neverwinter is when you're playing the game, it downloads patch files and it patches the game while you're playing. And so I noticed when the software was on with the killer, the patch files were downloading very slowly. And this is why it produced this smooth result, I believe. Uh, because it was just downloading those patch files slowly, it was actually working. So I will give kudos to uh, Killer and say that their software legitimately works. So if you're the casual gamer who just downloads a lot of stuff and plays games and you want to you know, still have a good ping, then leave this software on. Uh, and definitely in Neverwinter Nights, it proved that it works. Oh, sorry, Neverwinter, it's not Neverwinter Nights. But yeah, the Intel NIC, and lastly we'll move on to the Intel NIC, it produced an amazing result. It was, again, a solid performer. None of the frames were going over 40 milliseconds, which was impressive. And the rest of the frames were pretty tight. So it did produce a good result. I will say in this case, I thought the software on possibly won this uh, test with Neverwinter due to its uh, due to the software actually working. So anyway, let's move on to the conclusion now. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, basically, yeah, if you're a gamer and you've got the killer NIC, you do not have to go out and buy an Intel NIC. Uh, it really isn't worth the money. There wasn't much of a difference. I mean, this is online games. It was There wasn't, you know, none of the killer NIC uh, with the software off against the Intel NIC. There was, no, I, there was no standout differences. I couldn't really pinpoint and say which one was better. Uh, I will say that the software on in the 120 hertz games, I thought it did a little bit worse than the software off. So if you guys are wondering, uh, turn the software off. If you're not downloading anything while you're playing games, turn the software off. Uh, that's the that's my recommendation with the killer. Uh, if if you are the type of person who downloads stuff while you are playing games, then this software does legitimately work. So I will say that. So it's up to you guys. The choice is yours. The software's there. Uh, I will say, though, lastly, in regards to the NIC, it does have the legit 1 gigabit throughput speed. It was an amazing experience when I got that 170 uh, megabytes per second download. Did you see the, me downloading Counter-Strike Go? That 22.6 megabytes per second. Freaking hell. So the Intel NIC definitely delivers in terms of its uh, bandwidth and throughput speeds. I think the killer NIC does as well, but it has a problem where it only negotiates at 100 megabits per second on my computer. I've tried to get it to a gigabit, but it doesn't do it. 
Um, but the internal NIC definitely delivers on its speeds. Uh, the millisecond response times was zero on both. And I will say, though, lastly with the NIC, for what it's worth, I will say when I was playing Black Ops 2, it felt like when I was on the Intel NIC, it felt like every single bullet I was firing was registering. Uh, when I had, you know, when I play with the, especially with the Z77 Extreme 4, the Broadcom, it felt like sometimes the bullets were missing. Um, and with the Killer NIC, it felt like once in a while a bullet would miss. I'd be like, I'm shooting this guy. What, what did that bullet miss? That's the kind of, uh, with, the, with the Intel NIC, I did not get that experience once so for what it's worth i will say if you're a hardcore fps guy and really competitive then go out and buy an nic uh that's if you're a pc like top of the line player <laughs> it might make it it might make that difference in competition but you guys are probably if you are a competitive fps player you probably already have an external pci express nic so anyway all in all the Killer NIC from MSI is an amazing onboard uh, LAN controller. I will give it a thumbs up. I will give the Intel NIC a thumbs up as well. They both work, and they both work extremely well. So, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Tech Your City. And next week, I will be back with the sound card. I'm going to be comparing a PCI Express sound card from Azus, and I'm going to be pitting that against the onboard Realtek ALC 1150. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to be doing a number of tests. I'm going to be doing FPS tests, frame latency tests. I'm going to also be doing my own ears. I'm going to put these things on my ears, tell you guys with my ATH Pro. Let's pull these up here. I'm going to be putting these on. These are awesome headphones. I'm going to be telling you guys which, in my opinion, sounds better across a variety of music genres and a variety of games. I'll tell you which one is the overall winner. And also, that's about it. If you guys want to see the review of the Intel NIC, I'll put it in the description below. Anyway, guys, that's about it. Peace out for now. If, oh, if, if you have any comments or questions, please put, it, please put a comment in the comment section below. Anyway, peace out for now. Bye.